Hello, I'm David Dickinson. This show helps you, the public, get the very best price for your antiques and valuables. I expect a lot of laughs on the show and sometimes a few tears. My Russian's a bit rusty. Were you in the espionage business? <laughs> <laughs> it's bringing a tear to me, I we haven't even started on the money. Just because a dealer makes you an offer, it doesn't mean you have to accept it. Eight pounds. No. no. They all say oh no, straight no. away. No, thank you. Are they going to come with me and gamble and go to the auction? I don't really know, but one thing I know for sure, everybody here wants the real deal. We're in Bradford today and people are flowing through the doors with their collectibles. Kickstarting the day with Tim Hogarth is Andrew, who's brought in a piece of glassware from the early 20th century, made by the famous French designer René Lalique. Good item. I would really, really quite like to buy this item. Better put your money where your mouth is then, Tim. Tell me a little bit about this piece of Lalique. Well, I bought it a few years ago. I do have quite a lot of Art Deco items, mm -hmm. um, but now it's stuffed in a cupboard. So I'd rather get something that I can display. I'm hoping to get an Art Deco mantle clock. A Lalique one? I don't think I can afford a Lalique <laughs> one, but um, an Art Deco one anyway. An Art Deco one. So in terms of glassware, you're not really going to get a better name than René Lalique. Everybody knows the name Lalique. Mm -hmm. That is the later mark that uh, in, 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 in this, this form, and I would say that that's probably the 1940s that dates to. Would you agree with that, Andrew? No. No? <laughs> you wouldn't, <laughs> right? You, you think it's a little bit earlier? Yeah, yeah. Do you? Yeah, right. what, what What period do you think it is? 1930s, probably. Right. Um, yeah, you, you could be right, you could be right. I mean, I'm not a Lalique expert, I do yeah. buy Lalique, but um, what pattern would you think it was then? Well, I've looked it up and it's yeah. the Jaffa pattern. The Jaffa pattern? Yes. Right, right. So you, you see, you're, you're teaching well, me now. And the, the colour, I think, is what, uh, what sold it to me in the first place. The colour is unusual, I have to say. It's not the most appealing of colours, though, is it? No. And it's not what you would necessarily um, think of as, as, as Lalique, is it? But I am going to make you an offer. OK, then. So, 50, 100, 150 pounds. I'm sorry, Tim, that won't buy it. Is it, am I a bit shy there? I'm afraid so. Right. 200 pounds, Andrew. No, honestly, Tim, I'm still not prepared to sell for 200. I just think the colour will see it through at auction. I, th I think the Lalique collectors will look online, they'll find it, and mm. I, think, I think they'll bid for it. Right, what about, Andrew? £220. You're wavering, I can tell. No, on, I, still, I still think it's short. Right, I'll tell you what I'm going to do, Andrew. I'm going to take that away, and I'm going to put that there, £250. He's certainly getting nearer, isn't it? He's certainly I th getting I nearer. I think it's very, very near. Mm. I, I do. Okay. I'm not prepared to sell at 250, <laughs> but um. I would take 280. Would you take? 270. Have we got a deal? We've got a deal. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Now, I didn't think I was going to get that much money out of Tim, but when there was £270 on the table, I couldn't resist. And I'm well on my way to getting my mantle clock. There's a decent profit in that bow. The size, the name, everything. Tim is going to get a profit on the Lalique. Like your confidence, Tim. We'll see if you're right or not. Let's go over to Brenda, who sat with Robert. What have you got for us? Uh, I've brought me uh, Grand Andrew medals. 
um, war medals. There is some sentimental value to them, but I've, I've kept them that long. Um, I think it's time to let them go now and let somebody else appreciate them because they've just been locked away, basically. I've got a couple of customers that would probably like these, so I'm going to try and buy them. You've got some wonderful medals here. Yes. Are they, would you like to tell me the story about them? Are they um, family ones? They are. Uh, they belong to my granddad. What was his name? Um, John William Caves. John William Caves, yeah. right? He, he died when he was 95, and I was only a small child then, so they um, were quite old. Inside this toffee tin, there's also a, a lead shot yeah. uh, that were dug out on his shoulder in oh. the Boer War. Wow. Um, Amazing. Um, yeah. How on earth could you have that in your shoulder know, and survive? Obviously a very lucky man. Very. Very lucky man. So tell, tell me about these particular medals. Well, these, these are from the First World War, um, from yeah. 1914 onwards. Yeah. Uh, to, that's where they come from. These yeah. were uh, in the, also from the Territorial Army. Oh, okay. Um, this one um, with a band on. Uh, that's the Boer yeah. War. Okay, yeah. so he was in South Africa. He was, yes. Okay, you, do you know what part of South Africa? I'm not quite sure, but I know he used to be a desert rat as well. He was oh. uh, with um, Montgomery. In, oh, was he? In, in, in the desert, yeah. Um, and you've got the toffee tin, which the toffees were sent to the troops, weren't they? That's right, yeah. Most of the troops got a tin of yeah. toffees. Yeah. Yeah, and you've got the coronation uh, souvenir as well yeah. from the King George and Queen Elizabeth, which yeah. was the Queen Mother. Well, I tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to put some money on the table and we'll see if I can tempt you. Okay. All right. Um, 20, 40, 60, 80 pounds. But Bob, it's really tricky when it's sentiment. Um, I have to put that aside, you understand, and just go by yep. what I think the value to me is. Okay, so we'll go up to a hundred. We're getting somewhere, but not. I need a little bit more for them, I think. You see, without the sentiment, these aren't worth very much at all. I have got quite a few of these in right. stock. Yeah. Um, I will try 120. Um, I felt it might be worth a bit more than that, really, but I'm not quite sure. OK, well, I think they probably are. At the moment, medals have been doing reasonably well. I think it's because the awareness we have with our boys overseas and, of course, in conflicts and so forth. Uh, 150 to 200 is one estimation and 180 to 220 is another one. There's a nice provenance, we know where they've come from, so I think that's a bit on the low side. Thank you. Hmm. I'll do one more, but I don't know how you're going to feel about that. Um, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do 130. If you go to auction, you, you have to get about 160, I think, 155, 160 to get back to that. Um, so that's 130, Bob. I, that's where I feel comfortable with it. What do you What do you think? Well, I think they're worth a little bit more, so I think I'm going to take them to auction. All right, and you'll have a really good yeah. day with okay. David, and Thank you. he'll get you some Thanks more, maybe. Much. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I'm hoping they'll fetch about 200 with a bit of luck, because I think that's what they're worth. I think Bob's medals might fetch 190, 200, maybe up to 250 pounds, but I can't take a chance on that. I'm in business. Oh, Brenda, you should have bought it while you could. Get ready for plenty of excitement at the auction. 119 to let's turn into 210 in the room. They really like this group. There was two people here, two collectors, maybe two dealers. They are fighting against each other. Are we done? Hammer's gonna drop. Go in, go in. Welcome back to Dickinson's Real Deal. Before the break, we saw Robert turn down Brenda's offer of £130 for his grandfather's medals. What do you think? Well, I think they're worth a little bit more, so I think I'm going to take them to auction. Let's go over to the sale room where auctioneer Rob Lee is on the podium. The reserve is 180 quid. Perhaps that's pushing up near where they should be, but it's about right. Are they going to make the 180 or more in the sale room? Well, I'm keeping my fingers crossed. Um, 
What do you think? Do you feel lucky? Are they going to make it? I'm hoping so, yeah. I'm hoping well, they, they should do. In recent years, medals have done quite well. They really should have the, the respect they deserve. And here they are now with a £180 reserve. Must start the bidding at... 130, 140, 150, looking for 160, 170, 180, sir. OK, we're at the reserve, thank goodness. I like to see them make their money, these medals. 119 to next, 200 into it, 210 in the room. 220, 230, sir, 230 in the room, 240 you're after. A bid in the room against the internet. They're starting to compete against each other. 250, sir. 250 in the room. 260, I'm after. Needs to be 260. 270, sir. 270 in the room. 280, I'm after. 280, 290, sir. 290 in the room. 300, I'm after. The internet won't let go. It keeps bidding. There's a gentleman in the room keeps bidding. 300 bit. 320, sir. 320 in the room. 340, I'm after. Well, that's making it now. And they're worth that. 360 in the room. 380, I'm after. 380, 400, sir. 380, 400. They really like this group. 420 bid, 440 sir, 440 in the room, 460 I'm after. 460 new bid. 460, he won't let go, the internet's back again. 480 sir, 480 in the room, 500 I'm after. Four, fair warning at £480. Have we done? Hammer's gonna drop, go in, go in. Okay, £480 is the eventual price. I make that bit of calculation here, take away, it's about 394, it's just under the 400 pounds. What's your thoughts on that? Fabulous, excellent. You're pleased? Absolutely. The real deal is 394 pounds, and that was for Private Caves Medals. What a fantastic first result in the sale room today. Now back in the den, Karen has brought in some trains. But are they first class enough for David? The boxes help them along and they're in nice condition. It's been in the loft for years, in my father's loft, and I just thought I'd bring it today. Is this your train set? Yes, it is, yeah. You, did you play with trains? It wasn't mine personally, no. Oh, it yes. was my uncle's. Right, yes. I would have thought this was made in the late 50s, Karen. Yes, yes. Yeah. yeah. And you've got two sets here. You've got this one here. Yeah. And this one here. Yeah. I like this set here because it's really it doesn't look like it's been used at all. It's in immaculate condition. Have you had it working? And I haven't had it working, but I know it did work because my dad told me that because it was my dad's brothers, you see. Yes, but yeah. Yeah, it did just to work, yeah. Well, I think Triangle was bought out by Hornby, actually, mm. or, or the other way around, I can't remember which. I think it was Hornby bought them it out. It was Hornby, yeah. Yeah. Uh, the real collectors do like the metal ones. You know, this is a little bit late for the serious train collectors, but. Right. Uh, Rocket launchers here. Yeah. And they work these, do they? Yeah. I won't pull it. <laughs> <laughs> I might shoot the cameraman. <laughs> well, Karen, yeah, so um, would you be sad to see it sold if you sell it? Yeah, but I'd rather see it go to somebody what I'd appreciate it rather than it just be stuck in my loft, so yeah. I'd rather somebody get a use out of it. Well, you're right, actually. There's mm. one good thing about the antique. Well, they're very green. Things keep circling around and don't get thrown away usually. Anything nice like this. Yeah. Some collector will buy it, I'm sure. Hope so. Well, if I get some money, I'll see if I can buy it off the yep. Karen. Yeah. Is it worth a lot of money? I hope so. <laughs> 20 pounds any good? No. That was definite no. Definite no. 30 pounds? No. 40 pounds? No. A lot more? A lot more, yeah. Two sets here, aren't there? Yeah. Fifty pounds. Mm. It's not quite what the real serious collectors want, as I say. It's sort of something that's just starting out to collect things like this. And um, I don't think triangles as good as the Hornby ones. The Hornby ones were better. I'll say sixty pounds, and I think that's where I'd want to be, Karen. You're not very happy with that. I can see on no, your face. No, not really. There. Not for two sets, no. It's not really the right model, I don't think. Would you rather try the going to the auction? You won't put any more on now? Not for two sets? I don't think I'd want to now. What did you think it was worth? I thought I might get at least uh, 80 or 100 for both of them. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'd want to stick at 60. No, just £10 more. Well, I ain't going to miss them for a tenner. 
I'll say £70 and we've got a deal there. Yes, yes. OK, thank you. Thank you, Kim. Thank you. Thanks for ringing them in. Thank you. I think I've given enough money for those trains. I hope to get a quick small profit on them. That would be just the ticket. Nice to meet you. Now, Anna has brought in a pair of night vision binoculars for Joe Brayshaw, and she's a bit in the dark. I just really, really wouldn't know what to do with a pair of binoculars, sadly. Yes, you could start I by having a closer look. I would guess from the accent that you're not Bradford born and bred, are you? No, I come from Hungary. And so how long have you been here? Five and a half years. And how is it a woman like you come to own a pair of very military looking binoculars? Because I bought in the hunting shop. Hunting shop? Hunting shop, yeah. And, and why did you buy them? Because I understand by looking at them and having a bit of an because investigate that they're actually night binoculars yeah but before i was fishing fishing oh yeah you weren't stalking some poor young fella <laughs> in hungary <laughs> i love fishing and right. i use in the lake it was dark and this is the problem if you cannot see you can crash the boat or in your hunting you can see all animal and so why have you decided now to part with them because we are moving i need the money you need the money 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 yes yeah. because we need a lot of money for moving you know <laughs> I suppose I'd better have a look at them and um, make sure that there's no cracks and dings and bangs. You can switch on here. Okay. Oh, yeah. They've got, like, green in the... Yeah, but in dark you can properly see right. everything. So they literally are only for night work? Uh, I think so. <laughs> yes. My Russian's a bit rusty. <laughs> so can you... Tell me what this says. Yeah, we learn in school is F U L U N. I mean, full on three. Full on, full on. three. Yes. Yeah. Right. Yes. Military Russian binoculars. The joy of doing a Dickinson's real deal is you never <laughs> know what you're going to see. Right, Anna. We'll start with uh, twenty pounds. Oh, loving that. Uh, 40 pounds? I don't know. David, uh, how was in my brain? Anna, were you yes. in the espionage business? <laughs> <laughs> I had to ask, don't write. Um, I think they're amazing. Uh, they're probably late 80s, Russian. Now, the estimation on these, I think is modest, 40 to 80 pounds. 50 to 100. I think they're worth more than that. They've got to be over 100 quid, I think. Yeah, I think as well. I agree with you. What did you pay for them, Anna, when you bought them? Nearly 1,000 pounds. <laughs> well, I, to be honest with you, you do not surprise me because I think if you went out today and went out for some night sighted binoculars, yes. I'm going to say I don't think you'd get any change out of 1,000 no. pounds. They could be more. So, not worth taking that. I think they just might do well in the auction. Thank you very much. So you've heard David's advice. I think he's spot on, actually. What would you like to do? I think I like to go to auction. Good luck. Nice to meet you. Nice to Thank meet you. Thank you very much. Let's go straight over to the sale room. Fingers crossed a buyer has got the pair of binoculars in their sights. The reserve has been set at £40, which again sounds very, very inexpensive, but it's a specialist item and you've got to want to buy it. Would you buy them? Is someone else going to give a good price in the sale room? We just don't know. We're in the dark as well. We're just guessing. Let's see what happens. They're coming up now. Pair of 20th century Russian 4x48 night vision binoculars. Unusual. Must start them at 15, 20, 25, 30, 35. Looking at 40. They're worth more than that. Needs to be 45. Internet's 50 now. 50 standing bid. 55 a need elsewhere. 55, 60. 60 in the room. 65, 65, 70, sir. No. 65 on the internet. Anybody else just... I think they're no money, these. I mean, they're dark. I need to see another bid. 
He's telling jokes as well, auctioneer. He's taking my jokes. Final warning at 65. Have we done? 65 quid. A bit disappointing, I think. What do you think, Anna? I cannot tell you nothing. <laughs> I think it's disappointing. So does Anna. I expect a little bit more than that. Nevertheless, take away the commission. You're going home with £53. £53 was the real deal. And I see that somebody has got themselves a bargain. They certainly have, David. Never mind, Anna. Coming up. Tim is a bit nervous. You. I don't want you to shout at me, Doris. Yes, but I know you love them. I know you love them. Love is a very strong word, Doris. <laughs> so, will it be love at first flight for Tim? Find out after the break. Welcome back to Dickinson's Real Deal. Over at David Hayton's table, HMS Victory has just anchored. But has the voyage been a costly one for Susan? I think I've paid too much for the ship. I paid £600 for it. I'll just see what I get offered, and if not, I can go to auction. Well, let's see how much of her money Susan can make back. Gosh, look at this. I know. It's a monster. It is a bit, isn't it? I don't want to take it back home. Not in the taxi. <laughs> <laughs> can, would it go in the taxi? It did. Jeez. <laughs> It's victory. victory, yeah, Nelson's flagship. That's the one. Yep. Wonderful, isn't it? Yep. I bought it for my grandson, yeah. but my son doesn't want it in the house, so... It takes a room up, <laughs> doesn't it? It must have taken a long time to make. I think that some of these modern ones are probably made in the Far East at the moment, you know, where right. they don't work for a lot of money. Uh, right. That's why uh, right. they can be bought quite cheaply, but it's quite magnificent, isn't it? It's a marvellous decorator's yeah. piece, isn't it? But the biggest problem for me is age, really, you know? Yeah. I mean, if this was 100 years old, I'd be like... Oh, no. Very excited to find it. So. I could imagine, yeah. Is it worth a lot of money? Mm, I don't know how much it's <laughs> worth to you. you. You've got more of an idea than me. Oh, well, I don't know if I'm going to be the buyer of this. I'll try. <laughs> OK. You don't really like it, do you? I like it. <laughs> do you? <laughs> Who wouldn't like it? It's marvellous, but it's just the age. You know, it's not yeah, antique as no, such. It isn't. I've seen yachts and this sort of thing done before. Yeah. And it's amazing how cheaply you can buy them. So. That's right. the bad news. Probably. That's the bad news. But, what's um, the good news? Well, the good pounds? news, 20 pounds. Oh, no. <laughs> no. Oh, no. They all say, oh, no, straight no. away. No, thank you. <laughs> you make it hard for me, this is with it being not old. 40 pounds. No, thank you. <laughs> this is the sort of thing probably would do a lot better through an auction, you know, if you got two people there who wanted it In for auction, a decoration. Yeah. Piece. Maybe it would be better, wouldn't it? Because you're not that keen on it, eh? I do, I like it. <laughs> like I think it's marvellous, but I might get into trouble if I took that home. Right. It does take up a lot of room. <laughs> I'm not taking it home. <laughs> and the logistics of carrying it around and that is so difficult with something big like this. You know? Is that all you'd want to offer for it? So I'm going to say £50, because £40 does seem very mean, but... Well, that's... Just, um, no, I think I'll go to auction, I think you ought please. to. I think on the Thank right day... You. At the auction, you get somebody away. doing out and sell away. <laughs> <laughs> I think he was a bit mean, but I don't think he's too keen on taking it home with him. So, probably best to go to auction. Hoping for a few hundred, maybe. Oh, let's hope so. But as Susan can't make the auction, the Duke's there to see if her ship comes in. I'm looking after her interests. Am I going to sell it, though? Well, I'm hoping I am. The reserve is £80. The question is, is it going to be stormy waters in the sale room today? Is it going to make £80? Well, the quality is not great, so it's up for grabs. Let's see what happens. It's coming up now. HMS Victory, Case Galleon. What a beauty. I've got £100 to launch it. £100 bid so far, 110 120 130 sir. 140 with me, 150 now. Yeah. Well, they're going for it. 160 with me, 170 sir. I'm out. Who's on 180? 170, it's a gentleman standing in the room on my left. Anybody else on 180? It's gonna sell. Fair warning at £170. Have we done? It's gone. Gavel's gone down at £170. I'm pleased that sold, because I was a little bit dubious with the quality. 
it's just under £140, I think. About £139. That is the amount that we're going to send off to Susan. So, Susan, it sailed in the sail room, it got through the storm, and I'm sending you 139 quid. Now, that's not a bad result, and that is the real deal. £90 more than what David Hakeney put down. So, well done. Over at Tim's table are Doris and Glyn, and they have two decorative Crown Derby paperweights. How much do you want for them? Uh, we were hoping to get at least 30 pounds each. The problem with them is that when somebody walks out of the china shop, they don't hold their value, and the contributor could be a little bit disappointed with the prize today. Let's hope this deal flies rather than croaks. Now, you've brought two Crown Derby animals along today. Can you tell me a little bit about how you acquired them? Right, these were a gift to my aunt, who was a teacher for many years in a primary school mm. up in the northeast. So when she left, when she retired, as, as a parting gift, they gave her these items. That was quite a nice gift, that, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it was very yeah. nice. I mean, they really loved her. She was really loved by the yeah. kids and everybody, so I think that's probably the reason why they... It's bringing so a tear to me, I go in all <laughs> this already. We haven't even started on the money. Uh, and, and do you like them, Doris? They're beautiful. I love the colours. Yeah. Really nice. So the, the colour where we call this the um, Amari palette, so yeah. it's not the Amari pattern, but it's in the style of Amari. You know, they're, yes, they're going to yes, be sort yeah. of like 1970s, that, that sort yeah. of period. Yeah, yeah. Um, so we've obviously got a frog, and I think this is some sort of game bird. Yeah, yes. I, would th I think it's a partridge myself, but I don't know. <laughs> I'm not an ornithologist, I'm an antique stealer. <laughs> It's and a long word. <laughs> it's a long word, isn't it? I'm quite impressed with yes. that, Doris. Yeah. <laughs> and this is all gold, it's all hand painted. Yeah. This is the Royal Crown Derby mark here. So, Royal Crown Derby is one of the top ceramic companies in, in, in England. Now, I've done all the good bit now, Glyn. Now we're <laughs> on to the market conditions of it, really. The problem with it is that with the Crown Derby collectors, these items, most of the collectors have these ones. It's the rarer models that they're all after. So it's down to price, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. it is. I don't want you to shout at me, Doris, because I can tell you're a hard taskmaster. I've been very good. You've been very good so far. So far. So my offer for your frog and partridge is 50 pounds. What do you think, Doris? You reckon well? No. Not good enough. Not good enough. We need a bit more, really, because we're trying to do the best by me moment for the kids. Oh. So we have to get the hanky out again. <laughs> what about? And we have to get some from the top. No, hey, now, Glenn, now. <laughs> Please. I thought she were trouble. £60. Pounds. Yes, but I know you love them. I know you love them. Love is a very strong word, yes, Doris. I know. <laughs> I think uh, another £10, pounds, please. And we do a deal. Is that what you would like for them, £70, Doris? Yes. Yeah, that would be a good price, I think. Yeah. You would be happy with £70? Yes. Happy. I do not want you to leave this table disappointed. I know, I will be happy. Absolutely, you yes. promise me. Well, this £70 there, Doris. Shake my hand. Thank you. Blue, thank, thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you. Nice couple, nice item, I was happy to buy them. Well, you're quite happy with your paperweights, but coming up... How, how Jenny's you pocket watches get you in a right tizzy. I am going to cajole the person into selling these items to me, and I'm going to go big, big. Find out how big in a few minutes. Welcome back to Dickinson's Real Deal. Now, at Brenda's table, Steve has some Royal Dalton character jokes. Um, I wish I'd have had them ten years ago when the market was really high. I won't be paying as much as I used to. I'll push Brenda as far as I can. Hopefully get her for up to £60. Here we go. Who's your friends? They were my mother-in-law's. Oh, really? Yeah, and she's... You look like the collector. Do I? You do. Yeah, you could have a character job like made of you. 
<laughs> they were my mother-in-laws. Yes. She died 10, 11 years ago. Oh. And they've just been in a box, basically. Oh, that's a shame. So we just decided to sell them. Right. You know stocks and shares? Yeah. They go up and they go down. Yeah. 12 years ago, these were up. Right. Guess where they are now? Down. I was selling these for about £128 each, the big ones, and 35 for a small one. Oh, you're upsetting me now. I know. <laughs> what we have here are the character jugs, and the way you can tell they're Royal Dalton, you've got the back stamp here, Royal Dalton, and you've even got the name of the design, which in this case is a lobster man, and they even go and tell you what date it is, which is 1967 in this case. The reason they call him the Lobster Man, there's always something quirky. You've got the lobster on the handle. As is on this one, you've got the fish. or well, the whale, is it? Is it a whale? It looks like a whale. What's that one called, Steve? Can we see? Captain Ahab. Okay, so that's got to be a, a whale, hasn't it? Um, and this one, well, it's got to be Dick Whittington, hasn't it? With yeah. the London and everything. So, all very characterful. Not a lot of money. It can make an offer. I can make an offer. <laughs> All right. 20, 40, 60 pounds. Can make a bit more. If they had come into an auction, not that I'm buying a lot of these at the moment, that's what I would pay for the job lot. Put another five or two, I'll shake your hand. No, no. So that you're not prepared to put 65 down? No. Okay then. So what are you going to do, Steve? Um, I'll take the offer. You'll take the offer? Yes. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. You got a good deal there. That's just what I wanted. I'm very happy with what I've got. We've got 60 pounds, what I was hoping for. And I don't think Brenda was going to go any higher. I don't think I'm going to make much profit on these. I think they're going to sit around for a while. You're not very cheery today, Brenda. We have time for just one more deal today. And Jenny's brought that's something me, in Jenny, that's put a me. right sparkle in Tim's eye. We've got two really pretty Victorian gold watches and a watch chain and I am going to cajole the person into selling these items to me and I'm going to go big, big. That's what we like to hear. So we've got two 18 karat ladies watches and a 9 karat watch chain. How, how did you acquire these, Jenny? I acquired them through my husband's um, grandparents. Right, so they're family heirlooms, really. Yeah. And have you ever worn them? No. Never? Never. Not even on a, a nice pendant or something I like that. I thought they were for men. They're not for Jenny. <laughs> Does that look like it's for a man, Jenny? Now, come on. For a man. <laughs> what am I going to do with you? Right. First of all, we've got very pretty, late Victorian, possibly Edwardian, ladies watch. <laughs> right. We can tell it's a lady's watch by the size of it. This one, this one's 18 karat as well, it's marked there. That is not gold, that's called the dust cover. They're not English, these watches. No, no, no they're Swiss made. And then you've got an Albert chain. It's named after Prince Albert, Queen Victoria's husband. Right. Obviously, you've got the gold content in there. But we're not talking about scrap gold here because these sell quite well for people to wear them as bracelets. But what somebody's done is, probably in the 1930s or 40s, they've had this strap made. So one of these watches can be worn as a wristwatch. So this is much, much later in, in date. And why you decided to sell them now, Jenna? I want to go on a cruise. Oh, you want to go on a cruise. Where do you want to go? I haven't decided yet. I don't know how much <laughs> money I get. <laughs> right. Could it be just like a ferry cruise, hull to Belgium? Something like that? Oh, I don't know. Somewhere maybe, somewhere warm, you know. Warm, it's warm in Belgium at this time of year, yeah? <laughs> well, we'll try and buy you a little bit towards a cruise. Right, okay. right. Are you ready? 50, 100, 
150. What do you think so far? <laughs> I'm only teasing you. 200. 250. No. 300. 350. 400 pounds, Jenny. Now, Jenny, just before you make any decision here, let me tell you what the experts on the day think about your items. And we think there's about £225 worth of gold in the chain. And we are allowing, even at a base metal price, uh, and not allowing for a working watch, about 150 a watch. So there's 300 there's 550 525 sorry. You've got £400 on the table. So I'm going to say, please, Tim, can we have a little bit more because the items are beautiful so 450 pounds jenna no you've got your mind set haven't you 500 pounds are you able to give me a little bit more and we'll make a deal well it will only be a little bit <laughs> <laughs> it might be the price of a cocktail on your cruise <laughs> and you could be just reclining there in the Caribbean and thinking of poor old Tim here in West Yorkshire 505 oh, pounds I did on. tell you it was only going to be a little bit Jenny <laughs> come on you can do a little bit more oh yeah, that's a good price <laughs> got to go a long way in the auction All right. we've deal, got a deal it? thank you very much and I want to know where you're going on that cruise okay. and I want a postcard as well okay Jenny was quite a tough cookie, but at the end of the day, I wanted to pay £500 and I paid £505. You can do a lot with a fiver, I've said it before and I'll say it again. That's right, Tim, every penny counts, especially as profit was a bit thin on the ground today. Brenda was anxious when she bought the Royal Dalton character jugs. I don't think I'm going to make much profit on these. And guess what? She hasn't made a penny yet. They're still sitting in her shop unsold. Thanks. Joe didn't even manage to buy anything. Uh, the joy of doing a Dickinson's Real Deal is you never know what you're going to see. She let her only item slip through her fingers to auction. Internet. David was keen to snap up the train sets. Well, I ain't going to miss him for a tenner. But in the end, he only managed to make a tenner. Tim was brimming with confidence with the Lalique Bowl. Tim is going to get a profit on the Lalique. Oh, no, he's not. In fact, he made a whopping loss when he sold it. At least he didn't lose money on the Crown Derby. Nice couple, nice item. I was happy to buy them. But he couldn't actually make any profit out of them either. It's a deal. Thank His saving much. grace was the pocket watches. I am going to cajole the person into selling these items to me. And just as well he did. He sold them on for £570, netting himself the best dealer profit of the day. <laughs> but none of the dealers could outdo Robert. He turned down £130 from Brenda for his grandfather's medals. Well, I'm hoping they'll fetch about 200 with a bit of luck and ended up making nearly twice that much when the gavel came down. God, that's the way to do it. Don't forget to join me, David Dickinson, next time for Dickinson's Real Deal. TTFN, ta-ta for now. <laughs>